Tonight, is that smartphone war between Apple and Samsung over yet? Google Now knows what you're shopping for, and Amazon lets you tweet into your shopping cart. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 80 for Monday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Okay, here's a convoluted story. Recode reports that the jury, who decided the second month-long trial between Apple and Samsung last week, awarded Apple an additional $4.02 million for damages involving Samsung's Galaxy S2 phone and an Apple patent covering an autocorrect feature. However, the group also readjusted damages figures from other parts of the form and didn't include damages related to a separate Apple patent related to autocorrect. So district court's judge Lucy Coe decided that Samsung was infringing on that patent as part of a separate decision that was back in January, but the jury left the box blank in its initial decision. It was then sent back to correct the form, and in its second iteration, the jury changed that blank box for the Galaxy S2 to the $4.02 million, along with adding an additional $1.83 million for the damages on the Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. It also trimmed the damages it assigned to the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket variant from $5.85 million down to $1.17 million, and then did the same with Samsung Stratosphere phone from $2.67 million to $1.49 million. In a statement, Samsung said that it was both happy and disappointed with the final verdict. In other Apple news, Reuters reports that the company is building a team of senior medical technology executives, citing LinkedIn profile changes and a few other shifts. The hiring seems mostly based in sensor technology, which Apple CEO Tim Cook said last year was primed to, quote, explode. Sources tell Reuters the move points to monitoring everything from blood sugar levels to nutrition beyond the fitness devices that are on the market already. Apple has registered the trademark iWatch in Japan. Several Apple patents point to wrist-worn devices. And then back in February, Apple filed a patent for smart earbuds that could track steps and detect gestures. Previously, back in January, the New York Times reported that Apple execs met with senior officials at the Food and Drug Administration, including Bekul Patel, who drafted the FDA's final guidance for mobile health. Something's going on. We just don't know when we're going to see anything yet. Security researcher Andreas Kurtz has discovered that versions of iOS 7, including the current release, iOS 7.1.1, do not encrypt email attachments in the native mail app. Kurtz says he verified that iOS 7 is not doing this by restoring an iPhone 4 to the most recent iOS version and then setting up an IMAP email account. He then shut down the device and accessed the file system, mounted the iOS data partition, navigated to the actual email folder, and within that folder found that all attachments were accessible without any encryption or restriction. After discovering the vulnerability, Kurtz says he reached out to Apple, but the company has not said when a fix could be expected. Google's Shopping Express has expanded to two new markets today, Manhattan and West Los Angeles, from retailers like Costco, Staples, Target, Walgreens, and Babies R Us. Same-day delivery will cost $4.99 per store, with no minimum price of purchase and no limit on how much you buy. Now, by comparison, Amazon's same-day delivery service costs $5.99 per order if you also already pay for Amazon Prime. For non-Prime members, it's $9.98 for the first item ordered and then $0.99 for each additional item. But Amazon's service is available in 12 cities across the U.S. Google, only in three. We've got Manhattan, West, West L.A., and then San Francisco. Plus, Amazon's selection is a bit better, but competition is good, too. All right, coming up, we've got a 3D printer for your lipstick. I'm going to tell you more about that. But first, we're joined by Selena Larson from Read Write. Hello, Selena. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good, thanks. How's it going? Uh, it's going very well. Thanks for uh, doing double duty uh, on Twitter today. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You're on uh, Tech News Today, which, which, of course, is our morning version of, uh, of of the news program. All right, so let's talk about this, uh, this story. Amazon is going to let me tweet products into my shopping cart. How is Amazon and how is this Amazon Twitter partnership going to work? 
Yeah, so essentially uh, users will be able to tweet a hashtag, Amazon cart and Amazon basket in the UK. And uh, when a user um, posts a link and if they reply with hashtag Amazon cart, then um, that item that was linked will automatically appear in their shopping cart on Amazon.com. Uh, there is one caveat, however, you need to link your Twitter account to your Amazon account, essentially so Amazon can read your tweets, cull through those uh, hashtags, and uh, be alerted when you hashtag something Amazon cart. You're not actually purchasing anything with this hashtag, however. It's really just, uh, say your friend posts a link to uh, a product that you're really into, uh, and you reply with hashtag Amazon cart, it just goes into your shopping cart, and then you'll have to log back in if you want to buy it. So it's really just bookmarking a product with a tweet. Do you think that this is going to entice anyone to talk more about products on Twitter? I know that that happens to some extent, but it's not really the way that most of us are using Twitter. I, I would think of pinning something on Pinterest would make more sense uh, with an Amazon partnership, for example. Yes, definitely. And um, there's been a lot of talk uh, with a Twitter e-commerce product, but there hasn't really been one that really comes into fruition. I know American Express has tried this by letting people buy things with a tweet. Starbucks has Tweet a Coffee. And while they both garnered a lot of uh, popularity and buzz when they first launched, if you take a cursory search through Twitter, which I did this morning for a variety of hashtags, including Tweet a Coffee, which lets you uh, send a friend a uh, Starbucks coffee, uh, it's really dropped in popularity. Um, personally, I don't find um, tweeting something with hashtags is, is very helpful. Uh, for one, it shows your followers that you're purchasing stuff. Uh, for instance, this Amazon cart product shows all of your followers your um, what, you, what you have in your shopping cart and what you're browsing on Amazon if you choose to, to tweet it. So I, uh, I'm not sure this is really going to do much for uh, Twitter commerce at the moment, um, but it's definitely... Um, opening the doors there for more talk in the future. Obviously, Amazon is, you know, if you if you think about online commerce, it's, it's probably the first uh, company that comes to mind for most of us. Does it make sense, you know, even if it's not widespread, does it make sense for Twitter and Amazon to continue some sort of a partnership? That way Twitter can figure out what it wants to do commerce-wise down the road because there's already that link in place. Yes, definitely. I feel like this is a good opportunity for Twitter to sort of test users' receptivity to something like this. Uh, it can really see if people are using it, if they are interested in uh, potentially purchasing stuff with a tweet in the future. Uh, it's a really good testing ground. However, uh, as Rico points out, that um, Twitter doesn't actually get a cut of any purchases made from people that add stuff to their cart using Amazon cart. So it's still, I think it's still an early testing phase. It'll be a really good time to see if users are actually receptive to buying stuff on Twitter. Uh, if not, then who knows? Maybe we'll see something like this in the future, but maybe we'll see Twitter pulling back of e-commerce just a bit. Well, let's talk about one of your other headlines over on ReadWrite. Uh, Twitter's plan to appeal to the masses demolish the town square. So what is Twitter moving away from and what is it moving toward to mentality-wise? Yeah, so uh, Demolish the Town Square is really in reference to Dick Costello referring to Twitter as the town square. Um, he's done that in the past, but on Tuesday's earning call, he definitely did not refer to it, not even once as the town square. Instead, he talked about it being a companion app. So instead of things... Um, instead of things breaking and being and being part of this real-time conversation happening on Twitter, it's going to be more of a companion to things happening around you. I noted that uh, this whole second screen idea is a perfect example of that. People can uh, tweet and participate in the conversation uh, for things that they're watching on TV or the books that they're reading or things that they're actually doing online that they're not necessarily using it for breaking news. So this I argue that it sort of points to a sort of Facebookification of Twitter, essentially Twitter adopting the visual aspects of the visual web, um, turning more into pictures and larger icons and more uh, more ease of access and something that's easier for users, new users to become accustomed to like they would on something, say, Facebook or Pinterest. Do you also think that this is a play to get more ad dollars from uh, the big media companies, for example, if you position yourself as a second screen experience for the you know, latest uh, uh, episode of Game of Thrones, you might get more money out of HBO, for example. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's almost impossible to go watch watch TV for an extended period of time and, mit and not see a, something, uh, an advertisement that says, oh, tweet us at this hashtag or use this handle or see what people are saying about our product on Twitter. So advertisers are already 
noting the value of Twitter. It's really the, the user numbers that they really need to work on getting there. And everybody knows about Twitter. Everyone sees it on TV. Everyone sees it on the news media. But people still have a hard time understanding how exactly they should be using it themselves. And I feel like Twitter needs to do a better job of explaining that to people. You know, you mentioned the Facebookization of Twitter. And certainly the web version of Twitter, the latest, is is more like Facebook than ever. Um, it's in my opinion, is a little bit more convoluted than it used to look. What are your thoughts on, you know, the the, the people who have been on Twitter for years and, and how at least the web experience has really changed? Oh, absolutely. I think that a lot of people who have been using Twitter for years are annoyed. I personally am one of them. Uh, I've been very vocal about not really liking the changes that Twitter has made specifically to the new user profile. Um, I believe there was a story written uh, just last week about uh, the death of Twitter and about how a lot of the Twitter elite or people that have been using it for years are sort of jumping ship because they're getting frustrated with the new user experience. I think it's a risk that Twitter is taking to alienate some of those people that are used to it as a uh, 140 character news broadcast, real time events right to their phone. Um, and I think it's a risk that they're actually, wor they're going to take because, um, because of these new users that they need to get on board aren't those people that are, rely on it for text and information. Um, they're really gonna, they might alienate those, those longtime fans, but it's worth it to them to get more people and a larger audience on the network. Selena Larson writes over at ReadWrite at ReadWrite.com. Let folks know where else they can find you online. Yes, absolutely. I'm on Twitter, of course, <laughs> at Selena Larson. And Google Plus, same at Selena Larson. Selena, thanks so much for joining us and telling us a little bit more about what we can expect uh, with Twitter's evolution as it absolutely. evolves. <laughs> thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, finally, I mentioned the latest in 3D printing might be about cosmetics. I mentioned lipstick uh, specifically, but the Mink, this is a printer that prints any color into not just lipstick, but a blush or an eyeshadow or, or a gloss or any other type of makeup launched today at the TechCrunch Disrupt stage in New York City where that conference is going down. So what happens is a user chooses a color on a website or a Pinterest board or from a photo, then uses a color picker to locate that color's hex code then that code goes through something like Photoshop or Paint, and then the makeup gets printed from there. The inkjet printer handles the pigment, and then the same raw material substrates create most types of makeup, be them powders or cream or lipsticks. If it sounds interesting to you, the Manco is going to sell for under $200 with plans to launch later in the year. They've got some manufacturing kinks to work out yet. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, feedback. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and weekdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.